Hello folks, this is Margie Roy from 3dcuts.com and this is the tutorial for making the barber shop that goes along with Tea Light Village. I've been working on Tea Light Village for years. There are a number of buildings and accessories to go with it and each year I come out with a couple more buildings. The barber shop is one of the buildings from, for 2018 and you really should go to my website at 3dcuts.com to see all of the options and the possibilities that you can do with Tea Light Village. Remember to also look at the tutorial at 3dcuts.com because there I have additional information about the types of paper to use, hints on cutting, types of glue I use, and any new ideas that I have along the way as I put these together. You should always refer to my online written tutorial as well as this video tutorial. Let's get started. Start by cutting out all of the pieces. I have them here for the barber shop, and that also comes with a tree, a park bench, and a fence. If you're not going to use the fence, you might want to remove that from the cutting file before you cut. That piece takes a long time to cut. You can also use it on many of the other buildings in Tea Light Village. To begin, we're going to start by putting the building together. I like to put wax paper on the inside of all of the openings for the buildings on Tea Light Village. These are designed to have lights inside of them and they shine too brightly. The wax paper helps diffuse the light. You could also use vellum or other types of uh, paper. It doesn't have to be wax paper. Using art glitter glue that I have transferred to a bottle that has a very tiny nozzle, I will put glue around some of the windows. I will then attach wax paper to the inside, press it in place, take an X-Acto knife and quickly slice around them just going through the wax paper layer and removing it. I will continue to do that with all of the other windows. There, all of the windows are now lined with wax paper on the inside. Next, I will fold on all of the dotted fold lines on the building. I use the dotted fold lines. You can, if you want, remove them and use add score lines, but this works best with the combination of machine and cutting software that I have. These all get folded toward the inside. They all get folded in the same direction. I'm gonna fold the door at this point too because it's very hard to do that later. Great. Now let's take score tape. I especially like score tape as my adhesive of choice on these buildings. It goes on easily, it lasts a long time, and it's to keep my fingers clean. I also like it because I can apply all of the score tape while the building is flat and only remove the backing as I need to adhere the different pieces. It really works well for this type of project. There we go, there's a great diagram at my website on where all of the score tape goes, I know. I forgot to put it on the roof. I also need one strip of score tape along both sides of the roof. We are also going to put on the barber pole before we put the, uh, make the building three-dimensional. It's just easier to do as much as you can while it's flat. The barber pole is being made from these four pieces. I am going to make it all in white. You might decide that you want the stripe to be red. I like to keep my whole Tea Light Village white, but others have made it colored. This is the base of the pole. 
the center of the pole. I'm going to take it and I am going to curl it tightly over a toothpick. Like so. I'm going to take the toothpick out, open it up, and apply just a line of art glitter glue along here. And then I'm going to curl it around again and glue that into place. If you see that hole there, this is going to have to fit through that hole. So that gives you an idea as to the diameter. It's about as small as you can do with cardstock. And if you're, if you're using a thicker cardstock, you might not be able to do this piece out of the cardstock. You might have to choose something thinner. Pitch it until it holds. Then on this little piece, there are two tabs at the end, dotted fold lines again. They each get folded in. like so. Once you've got this round, you're going to take the long skinny one and just put a few dots of glue, not a lot because you don't want to make a mess here, along this. And I'm going to take this and now I'm going to do the spiral on the pole. As I've told you, I'm doing mine in white. You might want to consider doing it in red. I've thought about it. But in any case, I do want to spiral on the iconic barbershop pole. And I'm going down at a little angle all the way around this column that I made. All the way till I get to the bottom. And then I'll snip it off. Can you see that tiny detail there? Okay, I have folded in the two ends of the bracket that'll hold this. We slide this through one hole at one end and the other hole at the other end. Now on the ends here, I have these tiny little tabs that are gonna fold out. And I'm going to put glue on the back side, outside of this bracket, just a little bit there. Might use my toothpick to spread it around. And then glue those tabs into place. Doo -doo -doo. I can see one of these little tabs is sticking out on the front. I don't want that. I'm going to cut that off. And I will do the same at the other side of the holding bracket here. Fold out the tabs. Apply some glue. Spread it around carefully. and fold these down in place. Then press to it here. There we go. Okay, now the second bracket also has two folds. And that will go on the outside of this one to hide all of these little tabs on both ends. So again, apply a little bit of glue. Glue can go on the back side here and on the other end as well. This will go over all of that and sandwich it all in to hide the ragged edges. Pinch it in place 
especially on the front side, that will be visible. Can you see that I have made a very tiny barbershop pole? That is going to get glued here, but before I glue it, I need to put on the awning. The awning piece folds forward on the fold line here, and then the um, scalloped edge gets folded down. That is going to be glued right here inside the peak and provide an awning over the front of the bar barbershop. We want to put that on before we put the barbershop pole in so we get placement correct. So there's some art glitter glue adhesive. Press that in to match the dotted fold lines and just position that there in place. This is going to be centered between the window and the door, right below the awning. So we're gonna put glue on it here. Check my placement and adhere. There we go. Now we can start assembling the building. I like to first make it square, so I start with the end tab here, peel the score tape from that tab, wrap it around, line up the corner, but also the bottom edges. And when you've got it well aligned, press in place. When we put the roof into place, we first peel the two eaves that are closest to the roof. And you do both of those at once. Front one and the back one. Take one at a time, line those up ever so carefully, pinch, and do the same on the back side. Pinch. Now you will do the other half of the eaves, peeling both of them. There's one. There's the second one. You will also peel the final tab, the end tab on the roof for this one before you put it into place. Now fold these two down, fold this one down, bring it around and tuck it in there. Align that edge right there and squeeze in the center. Then do the front and back eaves and press. Okay, the next piece to put on our barber shop is the roof. Fold it in half, peel both strips. Now, open that flat, line this up with just below, just a hair below the fold line, trying to get it equal from front to back or back to front, and place it. Press in place, fold it over, press that in place, and we have a barber shop for Ledge Village. The next accessory to go with it is the park bench. This is tiny. We are going to fold these two pieces and put them together. 
I'm going to take a metal straight edge here to help me fold this over right there and right there. That will help. There are dotted fold lines there, but they tend to not want to fold on them because they're so close to the seam. So that part will be the bench. On this part, we fold it right behind the upright and the same on this side right behind the upright. That's the back of the bench and the side supports. Take one side and put art glitter glue just on the bottom U. It does not go up to the top of that bottom U. Right there like so. Then I will take the bench and line it up directly on top of it. And this is gonna be a place where I expect tweezers can squeeze more accurately than my fingers. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Put glue on the U. Overlap this, line them up, and press. And there we have an appropriately, appropriately sized tiny little bench to go with our barber shop for our tea light village. The last piece, I always like to include a tree. It seems to me the more trees that I have in tea light village, the more I like it. You can tell I live in a forest. As with all of my trees, you there's a double fold line up the trunk of the tree and you fold on both halves. Okay, both have been folded. I'm going to take my eighth inch score tape and run a strip of score tape right down the spine of one of the trees. Cut it off at the top, peel that, fold it up and match the two. It's most important that the bases match. It'll stand more squarely if you match those. And there we have another Tea Light Village tree. We have the tree, we have the barbershop, and we have the bench. What else are you going to make to go with your Tea Light Village? Have you made the hexagon bases that help you put in fairy lights instead of tea lights? Make all of the buildings and send me photographs when you're done. How many Tea Light Village buildings have you made? I've been designing them for a number of years and there is a whole village that you can construct. At my website at 3dcuts.com, there is an idea tab, and if you look under there, you will see many photographs of the different ways craftspeople have put together their tea light villages. Happy crafting, everyone.